what you uh, pointed at here is the idea of whatever you do, just keep it consistent. And let's try not to drop it substantially. Like we don't need to be breathing at a, like a resonant six breaths per minute rate to take these spot checks, you know, just do it at what's considered natural. But, you know, everybody's going to have, or at least most people, especially if they're high performers, they're going to experience like what you experience and what I experience that level of Hawthorne effect, which is like when I'm monitored or when I'm being, you know, uh, watched by this, you know, this device or whatever it may be, I'm going to just naturally slow my breathing down. It just, it happens. But, you know, as long as that's consistent, then it's, then it's okay. So Marco, we talk about this idea. Okay. So RMSSD is kind of like the go-to. We talk about this morning check. Should this morning check be like first thing in the morning? Like literally you roll out of bed or you stay in bed and you have your phone kind of with you and you just check while you're in a supine position. Should it be seated? Can you do it standing or does it just need to be consistent? Um, and then it's like, uh, that's one question question. And then part of it too is like, I mean, sh could you do anything like uh, after? No, like, no, better way to put it is a lot of people will ask me like, can I go like drink a cup of coffee and then do it? Or is that like a no go? What's your per perspective and take on that? Like, should it just be done like first thing in the morning as soon as you like maybe not even roll out of bed? Yeah, yeah. Ideally, I would say so. So um, you wake up and then you take your measurement. I think there is, of course, some freedom in terms of uh, many of the aspects you mentioned, body position, for example, um, or if you need to go to the bathroom, then it's preferable actually to do that before and then mm -hmm. to measure. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that that's is uh, yeah, typically advised. Yeah, And then when you come back, of course, maybe wait 30 seconds again, just um, relax and then take your measurement. For people that have, you know, maybe small children or animals or anything that would make it impossible to take a morning measurement, I think sometimes a slightly different routine, going in another room uh, that is maybe quiet, sitting there and taking your measurements, totally fine. Yeah. Things to avoid are more like, as you mentioned, the coffee or anything that is, you know, uh, going to trigger a different response that is transitory, right? The effect of coffee will not be 70 hours, but still right. it's going to impact you for a couple of minutes, uh, half an hour, an hour. So that is going to be problematic if you measure right after. Mm -hmm. Try to do your measurement, you know, before breakfast, before, um, yeah, before food or any fluid intake, and then before exercise. So sure. there is some room there which you can find what's the best routine for you. For most people, the easiest typically as you wake up, grab the phone, take the measurement, and that's it. Yeah. Well, the great thing is, like, especially with your device, I'll speak to the your device and then to the continuous devices. So with your device, uh, which is, again, an, an application on the on an iPhone, on Android, is that, like, you can just stay laying in bed, grab the phone, put the app on, and then just kind of lay there and rest and kind of continue kind of the rest portion. Uh, and then next thing you know, like, you've got your you got your score there, which is which is really good. Uh, you know, with the continuous or overnight readings, let's say like Aura, I use Aura because that's just kind of my favorite go-to continuous, you know, sleep wearable. I know you have, you know, d uh, dense connections and done a lot of work with Aura and it's great. Like, I mean, it's a phenomenal device. Um, do you think that people, and this is kind of a little bit of more of a, um, I guess you could say philosophical question. I don't know. Not really. It's a science. So I, I don't think it's a philosophical question. It's just one that's an interesting question to me. Like, should people immediately, like first thing they do after they've done their reading, should they look at it and kind of determine like where they are? Should they open up their Aura Ring app and like look at that score? Because I've heard different responses to that, um, especially in regards to this whole idea of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, like for the rest of the day. I'm just curious as to what your take is on that. Yeah, I think um, there is no right answer. What I mean is that people are different. And uh, some people, you know, we look at the data and this happens, especially after a while, right? If you understand yeah. the technology and if you understand what it's measuring and the fact that there can be changes in stress that can be um, important, for example, you know, what happens before you get sick or during sickness, right. or at the same time, there can be changes that are irrelevant and acute suppression in HRV because maybe you didn't digest well yesterday's dinner and things like sure. that. Sure. So we need to be able to um, look at the data and also assess how we feel subjectively 
yeah. without that subjective feeling being yeah. completely dependent on the data we just looked at. <laughs> so I think yes. that's really important. <laughs> uh, what we do in the app typically is that people measure. After the measurement, we have this questionnaire where they answer also subjective mm-hmm. things, which mm-hmm. I think it's it's really um, uh, important at times because mm-hmm. it just you just pause a second and you think about how you're feeling, and yeah. you know that is um, often helpful just as a morning self-assessment before sure. you see any numbers. So only after the questionnaire you will see your actual HRV. So right. that process maybe combines a bit of the two so that yeah. you have the hard data, but yeah. also the subjective assessment. Um, and yeah, for anyone that maybe has not measured or does not have a wearable and would like to start or to look into this kind of things, I think the best thing to do is to just observe for several weeks or even longer without doing you know too much based on the data. Sure. So do not change anything and see maybe on a low day, how did it go? Mm-hmm. Maybe you were totally fine and that is not a problem. And only when you have a couple of low days, so yeah. a stronger chronic stressor that is impacting you, then maybe you're starting to feel a bit down and then mm-hmm. later on you will learn how to use the data. So you will see that, okay, today I have a suppression, but I feel good. Yeah. So we don't care about this. We just go on with our day. We just right. maybe pay a little more attention. Mm-hmm. And then if we have two or three days with these suppressions, then we know that something bigger is there and then we take action. Yes. Um, so I think, you know, we can learn from the data this way, but we should always try not to depend too much or entirely on the data. Um, that should not yeah. be the point, but it's unfortunately how it ends up being in many cases. Yeah, you know, I, I, I beat this drum to death, but I don't mind beating it to death. But I, I always kind of come back with this idea of marrying the subjective with the objective. Um, it should not be that we just carry on with one over the other or just one or just the other. Uh-